Thank you for the introductions, and uh, uh, it's a very honor to be here to give a talk in the uh, plenary session in the CSP 2020. And uh, also, I'd like to thank the uh, organizer, the Professor Lev, for inviting me to this wonderful workshops. And uh, the, my talk title is the theoretical study of electronic structure of two-dimensional materials and their heterostructures. And before going further, let me introduce my university and my institute and my research interest. And this is uh, my university is Sejong University and was named after King Sejong the Great in Joseon Dynasty, who invented the, the Korean alphabet Hangul. And now you can see the look weird characters and hear the five syllables Sejong Dehakyo, which means Sejong University in Korean. And also you can see the uh, the similar characters, and this is Hong Song Yun, which means uh, Song Yun Hong in Korean. And uh, uh, I started the Graphene Research Institute in 2010, and it was the first government-funded institute on graphene research in South Korea. I'm directing this institute. So far, we had uh, three main projects, and the so-called Prior Research Centers program, it lasts nine years and it just ended last year. And also second one is nanomaterial technology developed program, it lasts for five years. And the current one is the Global Research and Development Center program, so-called GRDC programs. And we established the GRITPC International Research Center based on the Graphene Research Institute. Uh, this is a flow chart of my research activity based on the uh, Graphene Research Institute. In 2010, we established the Graphene Research Institute for the purpose of the research of graphene nanostructure and electronic devices, and then uh, it until 2019. And then uh, the at uh, in 2012, we got another fund, another program, and two uh, more the uh, deeply study the growth and the defect control in graphene and the development of innovative devices. And two years ago, uh, by focusing the two-dimensional photonics and optoelectric device uh, research, we uh, got the, another the program, the GRDC programs. And the purpose of this uh, GRDC program is to promote the collaboration between two institutes in Sejong University and uh, UTD, the University of Texas at Dallas, and uh, uh, to be an uh, excellent domestic and global research centers. And this is a schematic uh, view of uh, the GRI TPC International Research Centers and uh, Sejong GRI. Uh, you can see from the name of uh, the institute, we uh, focus on the two-dimensional nanomaterial uh, research and also UTD Center has a strong point in laser and photonic researches and try to combine two centers uh, to be a GRI TPC IRC and uh, main the focus and the scope is of this collaborative center is to study uh, the two-dimensional based of electronics based on the design and growth and synthesis and also we try to uh, applied in the photonic material and devices, even uh, including some biomedical applications. And this is the organization chart of this center. And uh, I uh, uh, directing the Korean part and uh, UTD center is uh, lead, led by Julia Su. And uh, uh, she's uh, now the director of Light Institute of Texas. And this showed the uh, networking and the research activity between two centers so far. And we organized many workshops and uh, even some of the special the, uh, session or special program in the International Center program. And uh, especially in 2018, the, I organized the, the special workshop in ISPSA. And also last year, I organized a special session in ICAMD 2019. And also, we expect uh, two more events, uh, GRI TPC IRC event in uh, tw uh, 2021 and 2022 in the Jeju Island. And everyone, welcome to this uh, GRI TPC IRC event in uh, coming years. Uh, the, my center and my research group is focused on the two dimensional materials and the issue the two dimensional material libraries in the categorized into graphene family to the calculator. Uh, calcogenide and 2D oxide and 
and the postprocess families. And here we mainly focus on the graphene and HBN and TMD, sometimes MMC and the phosphorins. And depend on the structure of uh, this uh, compound and uh, we have various electronic uh, properties. And uh, for example, graphene family uh, showed uh, some semi-metal the property uh, in the graphene and also insulate, insulator in the boron nitride. And the inter interestingly, the TMD family showed uh, a semiconductor and metal and even superconducting properties. And this is the band gap value of two dimensional semiconducting materials. And here, depending on the band gap, the, we can uh, uh, show some of the application the, in, the, uh, in the field of thermal imaging and the fiber optics communication and even display and the light emitting devices. And here you can see the graphene and the black phosphorus as a smaller band gap uh, around 0 to 0.5 electron volt. And uh, the boron nitride has uh, the very large band gap uh, to be an insulator. And between, and there are TMD families and dicalcogenide families to show some very reasonable band gap value for the applications. And this is my group. And my group consists of the one research professor, two postdoc, one researcher, and uh, two master student. And uh, I got the, the, I supported by the several funded, oh, sorry. and uh, to the main pro uh, the program and one individual basic science research programs. And as I mentioned, I focus on the, some head time structures based on the dense functional theory calculations. And uh, here now you can see uh, Lego block the formation uh, to show uh, so the head time structure using many kinds of two dimensional materials. And this is my research topic and interest, including two-dimensional material and even CNT uh, materials. And this is a list of uh, related to the each the material researches. And uh, in graphene research, so far we, I focus on the, some the growth mechanism and the band gap engineering. And for the boron nitride case, and I focus on the defect formation and the uh, boron nitride growth on the copper surface. And uh, also the TMD materials, we focus on the 2D, 3D detail structure uh, research, focus on the Fermi level depinning and the ferromagnetic contact behaviors. And this is the list of all the, uh, today's presentation topics. And here I mainly focus on the, uh, the theme and topics uh, written in bold faces and Fermi level pinning, uh, depinning and uh, ferromagnetic contact behavior and uh, uh, 2D, 3D uh, semiconductor structures, and, and finally, remote epitaxial researches. And you know, the, uh, there are uh, several kinds of some the, the heterostructures, mixed dimensional heterostructures using two dimensional materials. And uh, you can see 2D, 0D uh, combination, and 2D, 1D, 2D, 3Ds. And uh, for, uh, for 2D, 3D heterostructures, you can find the vertical and the lateral heterostructures. Uh, depending on the electronic property of 2D, 3D materials, we can see the several type of junction like uh, ohmic and Sharkey and PN junctions. And this is the first topic of uh, my talk today and it's related to reduction of Fermi level pinnings. And you know, the metal and molydisulfide interfaces are strongly impacted by Fermi level pinning, uh, which uh, indicated n type shock barrier heights uh, involved in at the interfaces in depend uh, respect of the work function value of metals. And this formulable pinning uh, can occur due to the two main facts. One fact is uh, metal work function modification by interfacial diaphragm formation due to charge redistribution. And the other reason is that the production of gap state uh, in the gap region of uh, molydisulfide and mainly uh, due to the presence of molydi orbital characters. And now to reduce the formula level pinning for the applications, uh, many research groups try to put the tunnel barrier between two materials. And here, 
uh, to control the shark barrier heights, uh, one group uh, put the magnesium oxide barrier between gold and molybdenum sulfide, and also uh, the other group uh, put the boron nitride monolayer uh, to give a zero shark barrier heights, and uh, another one, another group uh, give titanium oxide film between two materials, uh, cobalt and molybdenum sulfide. Uh, in my study, rather than putting the, some the material monolayer or film, the, I put the uh, atomic species on the metal surfaces. Here, I put the sulfur and ox uh, oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, and hydrogen atom on the gold surfaces uh, to form the atomic passivated go uh, gold surface, uh, which is contacted with the molybdenum sulfide. Uh, this is a calculation method. I, I used the ab initio pseudo potential plane method uh, called BASP. And this, uh, we found uh, some results uh, after performing the dense functional theory calculations. And this is the binding energy between two materials, gold surface and uh, molybdenum sulfide. And here you can see the binding energy are decreased due to the presence of passivating atoms, which means passivating atom reduce the direct interaction between two materials because uh, there is atom species between two materials. And to understand the degree of Fermi level pinning at the interfaces, uh, we consider both structures. Uh, here we consider molybdenum sulfide at, at the equilibrium position and at the six Ohmstrom apart from the gold surface. And as a result, we find uh, uh, some density of state, uh, uh, the plot, and here you can see the n-type contact uh, using gold, uh, clean gold surface as expected, and uh, using sulfur passivated and uh, fluorine passivated gold surface, uh, uh, we can uh, have a p-type contact, uh, which is different from uh, from the case of using the clean surface, and here even. Uh, the fluorine passivated gold surface showed us some almost ohmic contact. Uh, this Fermi level is very close to balance band uh, maximals. Uh, to see the, uh, the degree of uh, the Fermi level depending, the, we obtained the range from the balance band maxima to conduction band minima of the system. And here you can see the empty bar uh, show the range at the uh, equilibrium position and the gray bar show the uh, range at uh, uh, at six Ohmstrom apart from the surface. Here to understand uh, some the gap state, uh, the formation of a gap state, uh, and we calculated interfacial trap densities. This trap density is decreased uh, for the case of using atomic passivated gold surfaces. As a result, we found uh, the uh, Fermi level pinning is greatly reduced uh, at the sulfur passivated case, and also the fluorine passivated gold atom uh, show the ohmic contact with the molybdenum sulfide, as I mentioned. This is uh, the plot of plain average charge densities. Here you can see much fluctuation in the charge distribution between molybdenum sulfide and the clean gold surface. And after putting the atomic species on the gold surface, now you can see the much reduction in the Fermi level depending. And uh, due to the deduction of interfacial difer formation at the interfaces. This is a summary of the first topic. And now you can see the Fermi level pinning is reduced at the atomic passivated gold surface, uh, uh, gold and molybdenum sulfide interfaces uh, the, by the presence of passivating atoms. And it, now is the second topic. And this is related to photomagnetic magnetic contact behavior between nickel and moly uh, compound. And uh, using the dense functional theory calculation, we obtained uh, the first uh, the electronic structure of uh, isolated uh, molybdenum compound. Now you can see the uh, band gap region very clearly between the one to two electron volts. And after contact with the nickel surface, uh, molybdenum showed uh, some Fermi level pinning behaviors and. Uh, especially n-type contact for the uh, four volts molybdenum sulfide and the diselenide cases, and the p-type contact for the molybdenum telluride cases. 
uh, to understand this behavior, we uh, calculated wave function character and the plane wave, the Chardy uh, difference plot. And here you can see the uh, much fluctuation in the uh, at the interface region, which means there is uh, uh, the formal level pinning uh, due to the formation of interfacial electric diaper formations. And now uh, I can show the projected band structure and the partial charge density of molybdenum sulfide, uh, which show the uh, spin splitting and uh, also very small amount of magnetic moment, uh, uh, which is induced by the nickel paramagnetic properties. And this is also show the spin splitting and the magnetic moment for me. Uh, magnetic moment uh, in the case of uh, molybdenum and uh, ditelluride on nickel cases. And here uh, we, uh, we can say the formula level pinning occur at the nickel molybdenum calcogenide interfaces with uh, the charge distributions. And uh, also we can see the spin splitting occur and also uh, induction of magnetic moment due to the uh, presence of uh, ferromagnetic nickel uh, metal surface. Uh, this is a third topic, and uh, this is a mixed dimensional 2D, 3D heterojunction between molybdenum sulfide and uh, silicon surfaces. Uh, there are the several the experimental reports showing the uh, MP heterojunction between molybdenum sulfide and the silicon surfaces, and also in the uh, between uh, tungsten diselenide and the silicon uh, surfaces. And to explain the, this experimental result, uh, we performed the dense functional theory calculation uh, to show the, some the electronic uh, property of these systems. So first, uh, and this is uh, the electronic structure. Uh, this is uh, atomic structure of uh, the silicon surface. And uh, here we consider two types of uh, silicon surfaces. One is a clean surface, and uh, the other one is a hydrogen covered silicon surfaces. And now, depending on the uh, surface termination, we can find uh, different contact behavior between silicon and uh, uh, molybdenum And this is the result of, uh, of that uh, result. Uh, here we can find uh, molybdenum has a strong interaction uh, with the clean, surf uh, clean surface, uh, which has a higher binding energy compared to the, the other case and uh, molybdenum is located uh, on the hydrogen covered silicon surface. And now, as I mentioned, the different binding behavior uh, occurs depending on the surface terminations. Uh, this is the electronic structure of these systems. And uh, uh, you, for using clean silicon surface, uh, they are uh, formed uh, the gap state, uh, uh, which mainly come from the d orbital of moly atoms and which is generated in the gap region of molybdenum sulfide. And for using hydrogen covered silicon surface and uh, the density of state of molybdenum sulfide and the silicon is almost remain the same due to the weak bandelabras interaction between two materials. And here we still have a band gap around 0.6 electron volt and at the six Armstrong apart from the silicon surface. Here is the result for the band alignment uh, between two materials. And uh, for using clean silicon surfaces, uh, surface molybdenum had the possibility of anti ohmic contact, which give a very small shocky barrier heights around 0.1 electron volts. And for using hydrogen covered silicon surface, and we have uh, the VN junction with bending around 0.6, here you can see P-type silicon and N-type molybdenum sulfide, which can explain the experimental result mentioned in the introduction part. And here is the uh, plane wave charge difference plot. And now you can see uh, for the clean cases, you have much fluctuation of interfacial region and it's uh, the little, the charge distribution uh, at the uh, interfaces for using hydrogen covered cases. Now this is the summary and uh, now you can see the different contact behavior uh, depending on the surface termination of a silicon 100 uh, surface. And now you can see molybdenum sulfide and uh, hydrogen covered silicon surface from the PN heterojunction, which can explain the experimental result. 
And this is uh, uh, this topic is related to remote type tax using graphene layers. Now here we focus on the role of graphene in epitaxy, either remote homo epitaxy and or remote hetero epitaxies. And remote epitaxy uses lattice transparency of graphenes. Uh, in the remote epitaxy, the interacting force from the underlying substrate penetrate graphene uh, up to the over layers. Uh, here, the uh, this uh, remote epitaxy enables the copy of crystallographic information from the underlying substrate to the over layer through the graphene. And uh, here are the two the experimental efforts uh, for the remote homo epitaxis. Now, the first one is uh, remote epitaxy uh, uh, using the C5 compound like uh, gallium arsenide, indium phosphate, uh, gallium phosphate. And here you can see the graphene layer between two uh, substrate and over layers. And the uh, next one is ionic, ionicity dependent remote epitaxis. Now you can see these figures and uh, which show the number of uh, the graphene layers involved in the remote homo epitaxy uh, depending on the three uh, found the substrate and over layer compound as a function of ionicity. Now, uh, for example, look at the gallium nitride. Here, the ionicity is around 0.4, and the number of uh, the graphene layer is less than three, and which means, and you can find the remote homo epitaxy until using bilayer graphene, and it's impossible. Uh, it is it is impossible uh, for using three layer mono uh, three uh, layer of graphenes. Now you can see uh, it's uh, the. Uh, let me, yeah. Uh, here now you can see the uh, this the schematic uh, illustrations. Uh, here they use uh, a monolayer gallium nitride, the bilayer and the three layers. And for the three layer cases, you can find only uh, the Bandelbrot epitaxy and the remote epitaxy is blocked. Now you can see this one, and here this is the result uh, for. Uh, the uh, remote homo epitaxy of zinc oxide microlab. And uh, the, the, this figure shows the process of remote homo epitaxy uh, for the zinc oxide, the microlab growth. And now you can see that despite the presence of graphene in between substrate and uh, of layers and the microlab zinc oxide is epitaxially well grown uh, uh, on the on the graphene, uh, graphene surface. And now you can see the well aligned uh, the substrate and uh, the over layers and in the uh, TM images. Now this is using uh, A plane zinc oxide. This is a C plane zinc oxide. You can see uh, very well aligned uh, the, the uh, substrate and the over layer formations. And to understand the underlying mechanism of remote homo, homo epitaxy, uh, we did the DFT uh, calculation to obtain the charge difference uh, in several structures here. The uh, heterostructure having one monolayer and uh, zinc oxide substrate, and this is also containing the zinc oxide over layers. And here now you can find the char charge distribution occur near uh, graphene layers and uh, which formed, which induced the electric dipole formation. So the attractive atoms. Uh, make the remote home epitaxy possible. And here, right, uh, the figure on the, uh, the right hand side, now you can see the uh, uh, remote home epitaxy can be possible up to three layers of graphene. And this is the second uh, topic in the uh, remote ep home epitaxy, which is on the remote hetero epitaxy of gallium nitride microlad heterostructure uh, on the alumina surface. And now you can see the, on the left, uh, the uh, picture of uh, EL light emission from microlad LED in a bent form. Now you can see the uh, basic strategy for fabricating deformable LEDs. And now first use metal organic vapor phase epitaxy uh, to make uh, 
the remote heterap taxi of micro large zinc oxide on the wrapping covered alumina surface possible. And this is a schematic view of this remote heterapy taxi and uh, the substrate is alumina and uh, there is graphene on the substrate. Uh, there is uh, the formation of micro large zinc oxide. Uh, this, uh, the picture is a cross-sectional view of micro large and now focus on the interfacial region between alumina surface and gallium nitride over layers. And there are bilayer graphene here and we can find where alignment between uh, substrate and over layers in the atomic resolution scanning TM images. And uh, this is uh, the uh, diagram of uh, to show the process of uh, of making foldable LED panels. And first make uh, uh, micro large LED arrays using remote heterapy taxi and you put the P electrode uh, deposition uh, on the micro large surface and then you uh, delaminated the micro large uh, LED array from the substrate using summer release tapes. And then you flip to put the an electrode deposition on the bottom side and flip again and uh, you transfer it on the copper plate and leaving with a summer release tape. And you uh, finally make LED panels and you can do, the, uh, you can do uh, device measurement and uh, bending test. Here you can see from this uh, experimental result and uh, remote epitax enabled the lamination of micro large LED array from the substrate uh, due to the presence of, uh, uh, due to the Van der Waals, uh, weak Van der Waals interaction between uh, graphene coated alumina surface and micro lard. And also, uh, we can see that the specially separated micro lard LED panel can apply the to uh, make a flexible LED panel like this. And we did more experiment to, uh, to uh, show the defo deform uh, deformation of micro lard LED. Uh, panels in the many forms. The first micro LED panel can be deformed in various form, in twisted and uh, randomly crumped and folded and on rounded on thin edges, something like that. And also you you can uh, tailor the LED panel by scissors and can attach it to the moving part of a, a Lego, the mini figures. And uh, even in that case, the LED panel works very fine, the excellent uh, Excellently. And to understand this, the underlying mechanism, we did the DFT calculation to study, uh, to obtain the charge density distributions. And here, now we obtain the localized surface charge density induced on the surface of doubly stacked single layer graphene. And now we focus on the uh, plane B and plane C. Now this is a cross-sectional view of uh, bilayer graphene on the aluminum surface. Now here we omit overlayer uh, gallium nitride uh, the, uh, the materials uh, to focus on the charge density redistribution at the interfaces. Uh, on, the, uh, on the B plane though, we found the regular pattern of honeycomb shift negative charge uh, shown in the red regions and also triangular arrangement to positive charge uh, given by the blue spot. Now we can uh, see the electric attraction from the underlying bottom graphene layers can penetrate through upper graphene to show uh, this kind of uh, small amount of charge distributions and which can explain the, how the remote epitaxy were made possible through the uh, bilayer graphene. Uh, now we can conclude such charge density arrangement by underlying substrate across the graphene make remote heterapy taxi possible. For comparison, we studied charge density distribution for the single layer graphene cases. Here it's almost same. Uh, as the previous view graph, except to C planes, there is no the upper graphene here. And now on the C plane, there is no induced charge density because there is no graphene uh, uh, here. And to compare uh, this, uh, the role of 
the charge redistribution in the remote heter uh, heterotopy taxi, we consider charge density difference isosurface and the plane average charge density difference. Here, we can see charge density arrangement induced on the surface of graphene here, very little amount. This amount is a uh, plot here uh, on the plane, B plane here, and which make uh, the uh, which make uh, the remote heteroepitaxy possible. So we can say the charge density arrangement uh, can play an important role in the heteroepitaxy. And this is summary. And we can say, as I mentioned, the charge density arrangement redistrib and the redistribution uh, by the underlying substrate across the graphene can make uh, uh, remote heteroepitaxy possible to uh, make it the uh, uh, to grow the overlayer uh, on the surface. And this is uh, uh, now I can introduce a few more experimental, a uh, uh, few more collaboration be, uh, with uh, experimental groups. And this is related to the graphene and the boron nitride heterostructures. And the experimental group did the electrochemical. Uh, the measurement uh, experiment uh, to control the intercalation of lithium atom into the uh, graphene and uh, boron nitride heterostructures. And they found uh, some of the lithium intercalations, uh, different intercalation behavior into uh, this heterostructure using the bilayer and monolayers. And we explained uh, by the cal theoretical calculation uh, uh, to show that lit, uh, lithium atom can be more intercalated into heterostructure with, uh, oh, sorry, what happened? And with uh, bilayers rather than uh, with uh, monolayers. And this is intercalation energy result uh, depending on the several kinds of heterostructures and the boron nitride graphene heterostructures and bilayer and uh, graphene the boron nitride heterostructure with the monolayer and the bilayers. And now you can see the negative intercalation uh, energy means the, the easily formation of uh, intercalation into these heterostructures. Also, the smaller value of X in this the compound, uh, the in other compound, uh, show that the easy intercalation, more intercalation of lithium atom uh, into the heterostructures. And this is the tailoring. Uh, this is the tailoring surface property of graphene compounds. And here, now. Uh, this uh, paper introduced new functionalization process for generating the functionalized graphene. Here also introduced the method of creating, patterning, and tailoring of graphene properties uh, by uh, considering functionalized the, the graphene and uh, hydrofluorated uh, graphene. And also uh, we obtained this functionalized graphene uh, by sequential exposure of graphene to the hydrogen plasma and uh, xenon difluoride gas. And uh, we found uh, the formation of uh, chemically patterned graphene surfaces and several kinds of functionalized graphene, hydrogenated, fluorinated, and hydrofluorinated graphene. And we even found the coexistence of uh, the freestyle graphene with uh, the three kinds of functionalized graphene uh, the substrate. And to understand this uh, property, we did uh, the density fun uh, functional calculations uh, uh, by considering the structure of uh, the fluorinated graphene and the hydrogenated graphene to uh, find the, the hydrogenation process uh, the, to the exposure to the hydrogen plasma. Also, the, the existence of the functionalized graphene can be explained by the chemical potential analysis. And this is a formation energy as a function of chemical potential of hydrogens. And now you can see the, the possible, the formation region of each the functionalized graphene depends on the uh, chemical potential of hydrogen. And this is the final topic of the band gap, uh, band alignment in the graphene heterostructures. 
And here, this is a schematic illustration of vertical tungsten diselenide and molybdenum disulfide hetero uh, junction device with uh, tungsten oxide uh, layers. And uh, some experimental results to show the, some band gap alignment uh, plot. And here now we can see the schematic diagram of energy band alignment with and without oxygen uh, oxide layers. To explain this band gap uh, band alignment, we did TFT calculations and uh, we found uh, the result that uh, tungsten oxide is introduced into the middle of a uh, tri layer to show the uh, the the whole doping of the tungsten diselenide and the graphene as a result of a relative shift of the Fermi levels and the, this dragon is shifted uh, to uh, explain the experimental result. Uh, this is a plasmant and I'd like to thank the, my group. Uh, and my collaborator and my funding agencies. And uh, here, especially my group, the Gyeong Amin and Zhang An Cha and Shunsu uh, Che and Zhang An Kim. And uh, this is uh, the sky view of uh, Moscova. And uh, I really, uh, I'd like to uh, really visit Moscova later. Thank you for your attentions.